Hello, my name is Rose, and today's tutorial will cover how to crop your volume in 3D Slicer. So cropping your volume can be useful in a few different settings. Um, I've used it when you have a CT scan of multiple specimens in one jar, and you just want to isolate one of the specimens and crop your volume down so you have a smaller file. Or you could also use it to isolate one part of a specimen. Say you have a large primate and you want to just see the skull, maybe get a more accurate threshold, you could also use this function for that. So we'll begin by loading our data, our volume, into 3D Slicer. Uh, as you can see, we're in the data module and our volume is already loaded into the node. And you can, in the different perspectives down below, you can see the slices. If you haven't done this step before, uh, check out this link to load different types of files into 3D Slicer. So now we're going to navigate to the volume rendering module. So you can either click a shortcut if you've installed that, or you can click on the drop down menu and go to volume rendering. Once we're in that volume rendering module, I'm going to turn on the visibility of my volume by clicking that eye symbol. And then by clicking this target symbol, it's going to snap my volume into the region of interest pink box that you see there, and I'm just going to zoom in. So just as a tip, I'd highly suggest if you're going to be doing a lot of segmentation or 3D modeling work to get a computer mouse with a wheel because it can really speed up the process of trying to do things like zoom or pan um, so you don't have to remember hotkeys or use your trackpad on a laptop. So now we'll just adjust our shift bar so that we can visualize our specimen better. And we're going to be clicking display ROI. So we'll turn on that eye visualization symbol. And then we're going to use these colored spheres on each side of this 3D cube that you can see to just adjust to where we want to crop our volume to. So this volume is of a whole primate skull, and I'm going to be isolating just the teeth so that I can get a more accurate threshold later on for pulling out a model of only the teeth. So as you see, I'm roughly adjusting it in the 3D view, but you can also adjust the uh, ROI box um, in the 2D views in your slices below. So I do it roughly above, and then I can fine tune it by going through the slices and adjusting that box when I see, oh, I might have cut out a bit of what I'm trying to crop the volume to. So once you have your ROI focused on that new area, we're gonna navigate to the crop volume module and we'll do this by clicking on that magnifying glass up above, typing in crop volume, and then switch to module. Next, we're going to select our input and output. So our input is the volume that we initially loaded. And for our output, we're going to say create new volume as and then give it a unique name so that we can recognize it later. So I'm just going to call this crop teeth and click OK. And you can mess with the advanced settings if it's good for your project. Um, I don't usually use this, so I'll just click apply. And then to visualize our new cropped volume, we're going to navigate back to the data module. So you can either use the drop down menu here or right next to that, there's this button of stored modules that we've used during our, this slicer session. So you can just go back to data that way. And once we're in the data module, you can see our crop teeth volume that we just created is here. And we can turn off the visibility of our old volume and turn on the visibility of our new volume. And you can see it's just the slices that we focused on in that ROI. So we created our new cropped volume. So the last thing we want to do is save our data. So you click Save icon at the top, and then I just double click that check mark box so that nothing is selected because we only want to select that crop teeth NRRD file. And just make sure that your directory is set to wherever you want the destination to be for your files, and then click Save. Now I'm just going to restart Slicer here and just pull in my new crop teeth volume that we just created so you can see what it looks like when you load your new volume. So here in the data module you can see we just have our crop teeth volume that we created. I can pan through the slices and we can visualize it again in volume rendering to see our new volume. So this is exactly what we did before. I'm just turning on the visibility of our volume, zooming in, 
I centered it with that target button and I'm just adjusting the visualization. That will conclude our tutorial on how to crop a volume in 3D Slicer. So thank you so much to the 3D Slicer team for making this awesome software free and available for everybody to use. And uh, if you'd like more segmentation and morphometrics tips and tutorials, just like and subscribe to the Daily Own Lab channel. Thanks.